hi everyone i'm jay and today we are going to see the block diagram of 80286 and 80386 you can see that on the screen this is the block diagram of 80286 the block diagram of the 80286 is divided into four parts there is a address unit then there is a bus unit instruction unit and the execution unit let's see this all parts one by one so the first part it is a address unit this block is used to connect the microprocessor with the memory in the address unit there are different blocks the first one is different register there is a segment basis segment size and the segment limit checker the 8086 memory is having different segments so using these registers those segments can be controlled the next part is the offset adder so using this part the offset will be added using the offset adder the longer address can be accessed via a small register then the next part is a physical address generator using this part the physical address can be generated the second part is the bus unit this part is used to generate different bus in the 80286 there are different buses such as address bus data bus and the control bus in the bus unit there are different sections you can see that the first part is the address latches and the driver so using this block the address bus is originated you can see that the a0 to a23 so total 24 bit address is possible in the 80286 so the size of the address bus is 24 bits so total 2 raised to 24 memory locations can be accessed using the same bus the next part is the prefetcher so using this part the instruction can be prefetch then there is a processor extension interface using this block you can connect different peripheral to the 80286 microprocessor then there is a bus control and the data trans receivers data trans receivers means you can send and receive data between the microprocessor and the peripheral devices using the data trans receiver the size of the data bus for the 80286 is 16 bit the next block is the 6 byte prefetch queue in the 6 byte prefetch queue six instruction can be prefetched so while one instruction is executed uh, the next block is the 6 byte prefetch queue using this block six instruction can be prefetched so while one instruction is in execution the next six instruction will be stored in this block the next part is the instruction unit so the instruction from the prefetch queue will be transferred to the instruction decoder in this block the processor will decode the instruction processor will understand that what that particular instruction is trying to say and after that it will be transferred to the decoded instruction queue so you can see that in the 8086 microprocessor uh, there was prefetch queue but in the 80286 there is a prefetch queue as well as the decoded instruction queue so two uh, queue is present the next part is the execution unit so the decoded instruction will be transferred to the execution unit in this block the processor will execute the instruction and it will do all the necessary task which is required to execute particular instruction in the execution unit there are different blocks such as arithmetic and logical unit control unit and registers now let's move to the block diagram of the 80386 in the 80386 there are different sections available there is a bus interface unit there is a code prefetch unit instruction decode unit execution unit and the memory management unit let's see this all sections one by one so the first block is the bus interface unit using this block the bus is interface with the memory or the input output device in the bus interface unit there are different blocks such as the request prioritizer then there is a address driver pipeline control and the multiplexer trans receiver the next block is the 
code prefetch unit. In this block, the instructions are prefetched. So while one instruction is in execution, while one instruction is in execution, the next instruction is stored in the code prefetch unit. In the code prefetch unit, you can see that there is a prefetcher and the 16 byte code queue. It means while one instruction is in execution, next 16 instruction can be stored. The next block is the instruction decode unit. So the instruction from the code prefetch unit will be transferred to the instruction decode unit. In this block, the instruction will be decoded and processor can understand that what that instruction is trying to say. In the instruction decode unit, again there are different blocks available such as the instruction decoder and the decoded instruction queue. So when the instruction is received from the code prefetch unit, the instruction will be decoded and again the decoded instruction will be stored in the queue. After that, the decoded instruction will be transferred to the execution unit. In the execution unit, there are different sections such as ALU, registers, multiplier, divider, barrel shifter, decode and sequencing and control room. ALU, you know that the arithmetic and logical unit, the 80386 is having some temporary registers and it is having some general purpose register to process the data. Then there is a multiply and divide to multiply and the divide data. There is a barrel shifter. Using the barrel shifter, you can shift multiple number of time in one cycle. If you remember in the 8085, there is a one instruction which is rotate accumulator left. So when you execute that instruction, the shift process is done by one bit only. Only one bit is shifted. But using the barrel shifter, you can shift bit for more than one time in one single cycle. So that is the advantage of the barrel shifter. The next part is the decode and sequencing and control room. So in this part, the decoded instruction will be stored and it will be sequenced and in the control room it is stored. Then the next block is the memory management unit. In the memory management unit there are different parts such as protection unit, then there is a adder and page and the cache block. So using the protection unit you can protect one particular memory section from different users because in the microprocessor 80386, they have introduced this feature for the different user. Because for some users, some memory section can be protected. Not all user can be able to access all the sections. Some section should be protected and some section should be available to all the users. So, this, um, so uh, it is possible using the protection unit. And this is it for the 80386 block diagram and this is it for this session. If you still have any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you so much.